Let me teach you about indefinite integrals. And in this video, you're going to learn that finding an indefinite integral is about finding the antiderivative of a function. Let's start with the definition. A function, which we usually use capital F for this function, is an antiderivative of lowercase f if, when we differentiate capital F, so capital F prime of x, we get lowercase f of x. Let's do a quick example to help you understand this relationship. For example, if we have this function here, f of x equals 3x squared, and we want to figure out what capital F of x is equal to, we're looking for the antiderivative of 3x squared. That means we're looking for a function whose derivative is 3x squared. So what function's derivative is 3x squared? That would be x cubed. And why is capital F of x equal to x cubed? Well, because the derivative of that function capital F prime of x is equal to 3x squared, which is the f at x function. That's why x cubed is the antiderivative of 3x squared, because when we differentiate it, we get 3x squared. But notice, this is not the only function whose derivative is 3x squared. I could have added any constant to that x cubed value, and when I take the derivative of that function, I would still get 3x squared for all of those, right? Because the derivative of any constant is zero. So the antiderivative of any function is actually capital F of x plus the constant of integration. We always write a capital C to represent any constant. And before we go any further, I want to make sure you really understand the difference between a derivative and an antiderivative and the notations that we're going to use. So let me just make a little chart here. I'm going to write a bunch of notations that we should be familiar with. Capital F of X, lowercase f of X, F prime of X, and F double prime of X. Now, looking at the last three functions I wrote, you would probably recognize why I wrote them in that order. If I were to find the derivative of f at x, we write that as f prime of x. And if I were to find the derivative of f prime of x, we write that as f double prime of x. And now we also learned that when we differentiate capital F of x, we can write that as lowercase f of x. So the process of going from any one of those functions to the function to the right of it is finding its derivative, its differentiation. But what if I want to go in the other direction? What if I have f double prime of x and I want to figure out f prime of x? Or what if I have f prime of x and I want to get f of x? Or from lowercase f to uppercase f? That process is called anti-differentiation. All right, hopefully you get that connection now. And let's learn the proper notation for finding antiderivatives. So like I mentioned, the operation for finding an antiderivative of a function is called anti-differentiation or we can call it the indefinite integration. And it is denoted with an integral sign. And the integral sign just looks like this big elongated S. And we always have a DX, which is our variable of integration. And then between the integral sign and the DX, we have the function that we're finding the antiderivative of, and we call it our integrand. And we know that the antiderivative of lowercase f, we write as capital F of X and we have to always add the constant of integration, capital C. So let me label here what we have. We have our integral symbol. We have here our integrand. We have here our variable of integration. Capital F of X is the antiderivative of F of X, and C is our constant of integration. And if this relationship between lowercase and uppercase F is confusing you, well, first of all, the relationship is that if we differentiate capital F, we get lowercase f. Uh, so another way we could write this, and I see it written this way sometimes, we sometimes will see it written as the antiderivative or indefinite integral of f prime of x dx is equal to f of x plus c. And for some people that makes it more obvious the relationship between our variables here. Right, obviously when I differentiate that function, I get that function, and that's what anti-differentiation is all about. So in order to be able to calculate some indefinite integrals, so before we go through some examples here where we're going to find the antiderivatives of a bunch of functions, I'm going to remind you of some differentiation rules because in order to find an antiderivative, well, that's just finding the opposite of a derivative, right? We're having to go backwards through the process of differentiation. You're, so you're going to have to know your derivative rules really well. 
In the left column, I'm going to show you some derivative rules. And then in the right hand column, we're then going to be able to apply those rules to figure out some integration rules. In these rules, this k that you see is representing a constant. I'm not using c because we're going to be using that for the constant of integration. So if we're doing the derivative of a constant times x, well, we know the derivative of a constant times x is just equal to the constant. So if we're doing the antiderivative of a constant, what we're looking for is what function can I differentiate to get k? Well, if we look over here, we can differentiate kx to get k. So I know the antiderivative of k is kx. And then don't forget plus your constant of integration. This is the integral of k because when I differentiate k times x plus any constant where k is a constant, I get k. Next row, if I have the derivative of a constant times a function, we're allowed to say that's equal to the constant k times the derivative of the function. Right? We can just move the constant in front of the derivative operator. So the same thing when finding the integral of a function. If I want the antiderivative of k times f of x, I can just move the constant k out front and then multiply that by the indefinite integral of f of x dx. Next row, when we're differentiating a sum of functions, we're allowed to just differentiate the first function plus or minus the derivative of the second function. So for the same reason, if we're trying to find the antiderivative of a sum or difference of functions, we can just find the antiderivative of the first function plus or minus the antiderivative of the second function. And the last row is going to be the most important one. We're going to look at what's the derivative of a power where the base is a variable, the exponent is a number. And what is the integral of a power? Oh, and I noticed I forgot to write the dx. The power rule of differentiation, hopefully you know, you bring the exponent down, keep the base, reduce the exponent by one. When I wanna find the antiderivative of x to the n, anti-differentiation and differentiation are just opposite operations of each other. So if I want the antiderivative of x to the n, I'm looking for what function can I differentiate to get x to the n. When I find its derivative, I get an exponent of n. I know the function must have had an exponent one higher than that. So the function's exponent must have been x to the n plus one. But when I differentiate x to the power of n plus one, I would bring the n plus one down, write it as the coefficient, and then reduce the exponent by one. But if we look at the integrand, I don't see an n plus one in front of the power of x. So I don't want that n plus one. So how would I get rid of it? I would just divide by n plus one. And then don't forget your constant of integration. And you can always check your answer to an indefinite integral just by differentiating it. We could take this function and differentiate it. If I found the derivative of that function, I would bring the exponent down, keep the base, decrease the exponent by one, and that n plus one would still be in the denominator. Those would cancel and I'd be left with x to the n. So since the derivative of that is x to the n, I know that I've done it right. So let's go ahead and calculate some integrals. Part a, I have the indefinite integral of four dx, or another way of saying that would be the antiderivative of four. Well, the antiderivative of any constant is the constant times x plus the constant of integration c. And we could check that answer. If I differentiated four x plus a constant, I would get four, which means I have the correct antiderivative. Part B, I have the antiderivative of three X. I could take that constant of three and move it in front of the integral operator. So I have three times the indefinite integral of X DX. And on that X is an exponent of one. I can use the power rule, which tells me to increase the exponent by one and then divide by that exponent. And don't forget to add the constant of integration. So the antiderivative of three X is three X squared over two. And you can imagine finding the derivative of that function, it would be equal to three X. Part C, another simple one where we'll just use the power rule. If I want the indefinite integral of X to the power of five DX, I increase the exponent by one and divide by that exponent. Don't forget to add the constant of integration. D. 
we can move that three in front of the integral. And then using the power rule, if I want the antiderivative of x to the five, I just increase its exponent by one and divide by that exponent. Don't forget to add c. And then we can actually simplify three over six to a half. So it would just be x to the six over two plus c. Part e, it's often helpful if we rewrite the integrand in a different way so that we can use a rule we're familiar with. So I'm actually going to rewrite that integrand as an x to the power of negative three. And now if I want the antiderivative of that function, we can just use the power rule, which tells us we increase the exponent by one and then divide by that exponent. Don't forget to add plus c. And we would probably move that negative sign to be up in the numerator or in front of the fraction. I'll write it in the numerator. Part f, remember a square root symbol can be thought of as a rational exponent of a half. So I'll rewrite that as x to the half dx. And now I can use the power rule, which tells me if I want the antiderivative of x to the half, I can raise this exponent by one to make it one and a half. I'll write that as three over two and then divide by that exponent three over two. And then I'll rewrite this, dividing by a fraction, flip and multiply, I'll rewrite this as two x to the three over two, all over three plus c. And let's do three more. Part g, I'm probably going to separate my integrand into two fractions that are being added. So I would have the indefinite integral of x over root x, and I'll write that root x as x to the half, plus one over root x. And once again, I'll write that root x as x to the half. And let me simplify both of those. x to the one divided by x to the half, well, I just subtract the exponents and get x to the half. And my second fraction, I'll take that power of x, move it to the numerator by switching the sign of its exponent. And now I know when I want to find the antiderivative of a sum of two functions of x, I can just integrate both of them separately. So I can find the indefinite integral of x to the half, which I would do by raising the exponent by one and dividing by the exponent, plus the antiderivative of x to the negative a half, same thing, increase this exponent by one, which gives me a half, and then divide by that exponent. And then don't forget plus the constant of integration. And then we could just simplify this. This would give me two x to the three over two over three plus two x to the half plus c. H, oh, this one's actually quite a bit easier. This one, why don't I actually separate my integral? I'll separate it into the integral of x dx plus the indefinite integral of two dx. So when I find the antiderivative of x, raise its exponent by one, divide by the exponent. I'm not gonna write my plus c here and after the second one, I'll just add the constant at the end. Plus the antiderivative of two is just two x, and now I'll add my constant of integration. And part i, I've got three functions of x being added or subtracted together. So I can find the antiderivative of each of them separately. The antiderivative of three x to the four, well I can leave the constant and then do the antiderivative of x to the four, which would be x to the five over five, minus five times the antiderivative of x squared, which would be x cubed over three, plus the antiderivative of x is x squared over two. And then of course, plus c. Jensen, man.